Hey everyone, it's Megan. Welcome to my October 2015 wrap up. I read a total of 12 books this month, which was pretty good. Let's begin. The first book I completed is French Milk by Lucy Nisley. This is a graphic memoir that she did of uh, a trip around a month long trip that she took to Paris with her mother in around 2007. I thought this was just a really beautiful love letter to Paris. I love that she documented the entire thing in her sketchbooks and that we saw everything and of course it just made me want to go to Paris even more than I do now. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. Next up I read Chicken with Plums by Marjane Satrapi. This is a graphic novel that she did. I believe it's the last of her work that I have had yet to read and it is the story about a man who is completely obsessed with the sitar. He's a very well-known composer in that field and then his wife breaks it and he dies. There's no huge spoiler alert there. That is what happens, but it is the story of how this happens. I thought it was okay. I could have thought it could have been a bit longer, but overall it was really good work by her and I gave it a four out of five stars. Next up, I picked up Wonder by RJ Palacio. This is a middle grade standalone about a boy who has a facial disfigurement and it is the most beautiful story. I just loved it. So it's about a boy named August and he has spent his entire life being rather sheltered by his parents because of his disfigurement and he goes to school for the first time and it just what follows is the most interesting year of his life. I just loved the beautiful writing and the way the characters perspectives kept shifting around and overall it was just such a beautiful wonderful story. I highly recommend you pick it up and obviously I gave it a five out of five stars. The next book I picked up was I Crawl Through It by A.S. King. This is the latest one that just came out around uh, late October and it follows the story of five to six teenagers. There's like six different perspectives throughout the book that it keeps uh, changing around and it's very magical realistic. I gave it a three out of five stars. It's not my favorite book by her that I've read. Uh, I saw somebody on the back call it a masterpiece and I personally don't think so because I was just left confused a lot of the time and I don't know if the purpose of that is that I am meant to speculate what happens, like what's going on between the characters, but often there was so much magical realism it was hard to define the line between reality and the magical realism. I also completed The Grim Grotto by Lemony Snicket. This is the 10th, no, 11th book in the series. And in this story, um, Violet, Klaus, and Sunny find themselves in a grotto. They find themselves, I believe it's the ocean, in a submarine, so this book is all aquatic themed and it's pretty awesome. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars because I really think that it's just getting better and better as the series goes on. Next I picked up Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. This has been getting a fair amount of attention on booktube recently, well since it came out in around September. It is a young adult contemporary standalone about a girl who she is allergic to everything. Everything and she hasn't left her house in her entire 17 years of living, 17-ish years of living, and yeah. A boy moves next door, things get a little complicated when she starts to fall in love. Anyway, it's just an amazing story. It was really, I found it to be really original, and um, she's a debut author, Nick Lee Yoon is, and I really enjoyed this. I could not put it down. I started it one day, I finished it the next day. So, so good. 5 out of 5 stars. Next, I finally completed Fangirl's Guide to the Galaxy, a handbook for girl geeks by Sam Maggs. This is just an awesome book from Quirk Books that talks about all the different facets of being a fangirl. I loved this so much. Um, I learned so much about how to act at conventions and about different um, geek realms and facets within them that I myself might want to try and probably the most my most favorite chapter of this book was where she deals with geek girls, fangirling, and feminism. And it was just a wonderful book. I gave it a four and a half, four, four and a half out of five stars. Next, I completed Lies in the Dust, A Tale of Remorse from the Salem Witch Trials. This is a graphic, historical kind of nonfiction from Jacob Crane. And um, it was interesting. I honestly didn't know anything about the Salem Witch Trials before now. And now I'm completely interested. It is um, basically 
If you know about the Salem Witch Trials, you know that there were a lot of people hung in a short period of time due to the fact of testimony from children, local children saying that they um, were behaving like in a demonic uh, fashion, trying to choke them, doing uh, demonic things to them. And so they were hung. And one of the children felt remorseful enough to come forward to write this letter of apology to those people. And she was the only one who ever acknowledged that there were lies and that she was um, remorseful. So yeah, I found it to be informative, but it wasn't that long and the art style uh, wasn't my favorite ever. And so I gave this a three out of five stars. The next book I completed is The Witches by Roald Dahl. This is a middle gray novel. If you are familiar with Roald Dahl's work, he did Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Matilda, James and the Giant Peach. So many wonderful books that just made up my childhood. And this is the first time that I have read it in I don't know how many years. I was a little kid, obviously, the last time that I read it. I listened to it on audiobook to get myself into the hell Halloween spirit of things. It was great. It follows a boy and he is on holiday with his grandmother and he overhears a plot from a legit group of witches to turn all the children of the world into mice. Needless to say, he has to foil this plot and that is what the rest of the book uh, does. And I realized it's not my favorite Dal book. I know I'm saying this a lot in this video, it's not my favorite blank, but I just found it to be shorter and I found that the main problem resolution was solved very easily and so I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. Next up I finished The Grace Keepers by Kirsty Logan. This, oh my gosh this book, it was so good. It was probably in the top 10 of the most beautifully written, beautiful descriptive words uh, books that I have read this year. It follows two perspectives. Uh, one is Kalanish. She is a grace keeper, meaning she lives in an island in the middle of nowhere, just, well not really an island, just her house is in the middle of the ocean. And she performs uh, funeral services for people who have died at sea and she um, has graces, which are these birds that are kept in cages, and I think they are killed at the same time, like or like they're killed in the funeral process or something like that. And so it's a very isolated uh, lifestyle and not very prosperous either. She barely has enough food. She said in the book she has never known a full stomach in years. Or maybe that was North, the other character that is the perspective that we see. And she belongs to a night circus and she does this routine with her bear and he's always on the verge it seems of turning it back into a wild animal but around her he really seems to love her. So the night circus loses one of their people and through that North meets Kalanish and they have a strong connection and so the rest of the book they are separated up until the very end and it's about finding their way back to each other and in between a lot of stuff happens. Like I said this book was just so beautiful. I loved the imagery, I loved the ambience of it and it was a world that I just didn't really want to leave. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. The next book I completed is Eat Yourself Calm, Ingredients and Recipes to Reduce the Stress in Your Life by Gil Paul. I got this book for the obvious reason, um, to reduce stress in my life. So I figured that I should read the book first and then I would try out the recipes. And so I did. I haven't tried the recipes yet, but I know a lot more now about what foods to go with certain ailments that like stress ailments in your life. And yeah, it was really good. Um, probably the main complaint I have about these books that I'm reading is that I, they don't feel uh, full enough or long enough, but I still really enjoyed this and I gave it a four out of five stars. And the last book that I completed this month was Harriet the Spy by Louise Fitzhugh. This book, oh my gosh. Um, I read this uh, years ago for my children's literature course and that was for the first time. So I was in my early 20s and all I can say then and now is that I wish to God that I had picked this up when I was a kid and specifically read it at the time of when Harriet is in this book, so around the age of 11 or 12, because I feel like I would have identified with her so much and I would probably be a writer by now. I still want to write a lot, but now I'm writing papers these days, so... If you don't know the story of Harriet the Spy by now, you should. It is a 
middle grade book about a preteen girl and um, she's growing up in 1960s New York and she spies on everybody, literally. She has a route of people that she goes to check in with every single day and she records uh, their activities in her notebooks. She's constantly writing in her notebooks these observations. And um, one day the school children, her peers, uh, get a hold of one of her notebooks and read it and chaos ensues. I found this to be even better the second time and I really understand what people say about like the atmosphere that they feel um, when they read this. They really, it really feels 1960s New York um, for a kid and like growing up and she is pro she's middle upper class I would say, closer to upper class privilege and um, just the different perspectives that we gain from the people that she interacts with and spies on. It it was just wonderful. It was fascinating and I loved it so much. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Alrighty guys, that is it. That is the 12 books that I have read this month. Let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these books either. And I think that's it for this video today. I shall talk to you guys soon. I hope you have a great week. Thank you so much for watching. Bye everyone!